So you may have just picked up your brand new M2 Pro or M2 Pro Max MacBooks. Now these are very solid MacBooks for sure, and they're going to be here for a long period of time. Now right now they come out in 14 and 16 inch sizes. They're pretty much the same as like MacBook, except I do think the 16 inch one does have better battery life. But regardless, personally I've been using a 14 inch one like I have here, and they are very solid MacBooks for sure. Now if you are brand new to Mac, so I'll go and kind of give you a breakdown of this specific MacBook, and I want to give you some good news. This MacBook can last you for a long, long period of time. I'm talking like even maybe even past a decade. The I.O. within this specific MacBook, basically input output, the ports of this MacBook, as well as the power and capability, is pretty much unmatched. Actually, it's definitely matched, but you know, I'm really, really happy with the purchase you made basically. Now at the very top of your MacBook, you don't really have anything crazy. You just have the standard Apple logo. It doesn't, you know, glow or anything like that. And there's no other ports or anything you have to worry about with the top. So that's good, it's one less thing to worry about. Now flipping this thing over to the side, you'll see that basically the Apple logo pointing away from you is how you're essentially going to open up this MacBook. So if you take a look right here, we have a little flap. So this will allow you to kind of put your finger in there and kind of open it. Now I'd always recommend opening up your MacBook with two hands. So pretty much have one hand, one finger right here, and one hand on the back that kind of lifts it because I've seen a lot of people just lift it and it slides their MacBook off the table. I would almost always have a hand behind your MacBook as well as a finger or two fingers lifting the screen up from that little flap, and that will allow you to basically open up the display. And before we get too far into it, I do want to show you some other things around your MacBook as well. So on the side right here, you do have several different ports. So if you take a look on the left, you will see a MagSafe port, which is essentially just a MagSafe charger. It's how you can charge up your MacBook, but you don't have to use this port. I think it's great. But typically, I charge from one of these ports right here. Now, these are USB Thunderbolt you know, ports right here. So what these are great for is if you want to connect your specific MacBook to a monitor, well, you can go ahead and instead of using the HDMI port, you can use these ports and you can use it and connect it to other, you know, Thunderbolt supported, you know, monitors. And that's a massive thing that I'd recommend looking into. So these are, ports are amazing. You can do so many things with this port in and of itself. And there are some MacBooks back in the day that only had one of these. This MacBook has three of them. So you are in a really, really good spot there. You also have a headphone jack right up here too, which is really awesome. Now on the other side, it's pretty much the exact same thing minus two ports. So on this side, you have your HDMI port right here. So you can connect it to a monitor if you want to and kind of display your specific MacBook to a monitor without having to use a USB-C port. You have another Thunderbolt 4 port, which is awesome. So if you want to, you can charge from one side of your MacBook and you know use your display on the other one. That is another awesome thing. And you have my favorite thing, and the reason why I love these MacBooks so much, the SD card slot. Having that SD card slot is amazing. So if you have cameras or other equipment, even gaming consoles sometimes use SD cards like, you know, like the Nintendo Switch. Instead of buying some dongle, you can just use an SD card adapter and plug it in straight into here. So that's another really awesome thing that you have the capability of doing. Now on the bottom of this MacBook, it's nothing super crazy. You just have, now actually some people may not even know this, but you have a few things. For one, you have the feet of this specific, you know, device. So you can see right here, these are just, you know, always going to be there. If you're missing these, I would recommend, you know, kind of contacting Apple. But if it's like months and months from now, I'd probably recommend replacing these every so often, especially if they're falling off, because if these are very important. They keep your MacBook from being scratched at the bottom. You have several different screws at the bottom. You never have to worry about them. The MacBook Pro right here, as well as fans on the side. So you have a fan right here, you have a fan right here, and you have like an exhaust in the back too. So essentially this thing will keep itself cool all of the time. Now that is a quick breakdown of the outside. Now opening this thing up, it's a very, very basic process. Like I mentioned before, have one hand on the back or like in the center right here and have one finger, two fingers, whatever, whole hand, whatever you want to do and lift the display up. And that should give you a little bit of a breakdown of exactly how to open up your MacBook. And then you can go and just slide the display up and you should see we now have our MacBook. Now at the very bottom of our MacBook, we do have our trackpad. So if I go and kind of position my camera, you can see right here, we do have our standard trackpad right here. So this is broken down into two different areas, the keyboard and the trackpad, aka the mouse. So up here with our keyboard, it's a standard keyboard. If you never use a keyboard before, I probably recommend looking at some tutorials, but we have our standard keyboard. We do have a fingerprint sensor on the top right, right here. So if you actually, you know, input your you know, fingerprint sensor after the setup, well, all you have to do is just put your fingerprint sensor right there, and that's pretty much it. You've pretty much unlocked your, you know, MacBook. Very similar to iPhones back in the day that had fingerprint sensors, or Androids if you currently have one. And you also have our trackpad. So this is our mouse, you can click in it. I'm sure everyone's used a mouse before. But you also have something that you may not even realize. You have two speakers on this specific MacBook. You have a speaker on the left, and you have a speaker on the right. 
If you look very closely, there's these little holes on the left and right side of the keyboard. It actually looks really nice. I love the way Apple made this thing look, but you can actually see that in this specific case, we do have you know two speakers on this MacBook, which is really cool. So that covers that up. Now we do actually also have our display. Now, just like any other device out there, you always have to input your password or whatever. So if you set up your Mac, I'm assuming you already set up your Mac. If you haven't already done that, you might want to do that. I've already went through the initial setup. I haven't downloaded anything or anything crazy, but I'll give you a quick breakdown on how to use your specific Mac OS version. So in this case, after logging in or after initially setting up your Mac, you should come into a page like this. Now, the fun about using a Mac is that you just kind of discover things on your own. Okay, that's kind of a corny way of, I guess, saying about it. But essentially here, I'll give you a quick breakdown on exactly your home screen, some basic applications and whatnot. So at the very top, you will see this little like status bar. This will always be here. It will never go away. So when, no matter what application you're in, if you're in full screen, it's still going to be there. Even if you just like swipe your finger up, it's always going to be there one way or another. So at the very top left, you will have this persistent Apple logo, but you will have these specific things that come and go all the time. So it's just more options within an application. So you can just go ahead and just kind of mess with these. They change per application most of the time. You have your notch right up here. So this notch, it's not anything crazy. I actually kind of like it, but essentially your front facing camera is embedded within there too. So if you want to use that front facing camera, it's going to be right up there. Now in the top right, you have your battery option right here, which is awesome. You have Wi-Fi connection settings. You have a spotlight search right here. So if you want to quickly search for something, you can search for files and names and all these other things within your Mac as well, which is awesome by clicking right here. You have your control center, which you can quickly toggle your you know options within your MacBook. So if you want to toggle your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, you want to turn AirDrop on and off. If you want to mess with your display and sound settings, you can go and do that here too. So you have a lot of cool little things right there, which is honestly really awesome. At the top right, you do have your little you know option right here, which just shows you more date and time, as well as some widgets. So it looks like these widgets aren't loading properly right now, which is totally okay. But essentially, you can have your little widget panel here, which is very similar to how our iPhones have widgets there. Now in the center, we will have our little you know home screen. So what this is basically, whenever we download, if we have applications, if we have something like new folders we want to add, if you ever want to add certain things to your home screen, you can just click new folder. You can drag and drop certain things from your finder application, which is right here. And you can drag files and whatnot if you want them on your home screen. Majority of the time, people don't really care about it, so they just keep them under downloads or something. But that's another thing you can kind of keep in mind as well. Now, at the very bottom, you do have our dock. So this is also going to be fairly persistent for the most part as well. You can hide this dock if you want to, but it quickly, it just gives you quick access to certain applications that you use the most on your Mac. So here we have like Finder, which is like our file explorer. We have Safari, which is our, you know, internet explorer. And this is how it comes stock natively. You have your mail, Apple Maps, Calendar, which I use a lot, Apple Music, you know, App Store as well, settings as well. So there's a lot of cool settings here too. There's, there's a lot of cool options you have. But you can also click on your launch pad, which is right here, but it's also on your keyboard. If you click one of the buttons, it should bring you to launch pad, but regardless, if you go ahead and click on this little launch pad feature right here, it should bring you straight into basically all of the applications you have on your Mac. So what you can do here is you can just basically scroll through and just kind of see what's going on and kind of go from there. It's pretty cool and it gives you a break, it gives you a quick breakdown of all the different applications that you have on your specific Mac. So from here, you can go and kind of mess around and kind of see what you want to do there. Now on top of that, if you want, what you can do, which I would probably recommend doing, is going through and clicking on the Apple logo at the top left corner and kind of getting used to these specific you know, options. You can always log out of your account here, restart and sleep here and shut down your computer. You can force quit applications, which I wouldn't really worry about too much to be honest. You can click on system settings and this gives you a breakdown of all the system settings within your Mac. So you can tinker around with whatever you want. I wouldn't go super crazy, but if there's a certain setting you wanna change, you can always click the search bar button up here and let's say you wanna change, you know, your brightness. You can always just type in brightness right here and you should be able to find something that shows you brightness in here. It shows control center and you can go and kind of mess around and essentially the brightness is up here. So I don't know why it didn't give me a, the correct brightness, but essentially you can go and scroll through and kind of search through this settings panel and see whatever you want to do. But that's basically it. You can exit out of applications by clicking the X button. You can also full screen applications by clicking the basically the full screen button right here. I guess you can't full screen this. So when you exit it, it just goes down. Same thing with Safari. If you want to, you can just expand it, do whatever you need to do. And if you want to exit out of it, you just swipe up, you go and get into the X button here, and that'll cover it. So that is a quick, quick breakdown on exactly how to use your brand new M2 Pro MacBook. Again, there is a lot to explore. So I'd recommend just getting your hands wet, just going through, kind of looking at some other tutorials if you want to online. But by now, you should have a basic understanding of how to use at least the hardware and a little bit of the software between your MacBook. So 
that pretty much covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, till then.